Here I've got a nice number theory problem. So there are tons of videos on YouTube showing that the square root of two is irrational, or maybe the square root of three is irrational. So today I'd like to show that the square root of two plus the square root of three plus the square root of five is irrational. So this is kind of a leveled up version of one of those problems. And in order to prove this, we'll use the following lemma, which we will also prove. And that lemma says that if p is a prime number, then the square root of p is irrational. In fact, it's pretty easy to classify which numbers have rational and irrational square roots. We won't do that here, but I'll let you guys think about that. Okay, so let's do the proof here. And this is a classic proof by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that the square root of p is a rational number. So if it's not irrational, then it is rational. But by the definition of rational numbers, that means that the square root of p is equal to a over b, where a and b are natural numbers with the GCD of a and b is equal to 1. So we can assume these are natural numbers because this is a positive number. The square root of p is positive. So we don't need a ratio of integers here. We only need natural numbers. And then we can assume that they're relatively prime just by canceling out common factors until our fraction is in lowest terms. So now let's take this line right here and square it. So that's going to give us p equals a squared over b squared. So again, just by squaring both sides. But let's rewrite this rational equation as a natural number equation. And that would look something like this. a squared is equal to p times b squared. But notice that tells us that p divides a squared. So why does it say that p divides a squared? Well, that's because that's the same thing as saying a squared is a multiple of p. But then if p divides a squared because p is a prime, that means that p in fact divides a. And this is a subtle consequence of the factorization of a squared into primes. In other words, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, but now if p divides a, that means we can write a as m times p. See what I did there? And then plug that back into our, maybe not original equation, but this one right here that I'll box in green. So let's see, this plugged into the green box equation gives us something like m squared times p squared equals p times b squared. But now we can cancel a factor of p from both sides, and that's going to give us m squared times p is equal to b squared. So in other words, p divides b squared, and then by this same argument here, we see that p divides b. Okay, but now let's start putting some things together. We see that p divides a and p divides b. But if p divides a and p divides b, then p divides the GCD of a and b by the greatest condition of the GCD. But let's recall that the GCD is equal to 1, so that tells us that p divides the number 1, but 1 only has one positive divisor, and that's itself. So that means p is equal to 1. But 1 is not considered a prime, so we've reached a contradiction. And so what have we contradicted? We contradicted this original supposition that the square root of p was in fact rational. Okay, so now that we've got this taken care of, let's move on to our main goal. So we just finished proving that this lemma holds for all primes. Now we're ready to move on to our main goal. In other words, show that root 2 plus root 3 plus root 5 is irrational. And we'll do this with the same first step. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that root 2 plus root 3 plus root 5 is a rational number. 
Okay, but if it's a rational number, then we can write it as a over b. So root two plus root three plus root five is equal to a over b, where a and b are natural numbers, just like before. Again, it's positive, so we know they're natural numbers. And the GCD of a with b is equal to one. It's interesting as we move through this proof, it's unclear if we're going to need to use this. Maybe it's subtly used, but I don't think it's used at all. Maybe post in the comments if you think we actually need this condition in our proof now. Okay, so now where should we go from here? Well, I think there's probably a number of things to do, but what I'd like to do is move some things around here so that I have a binomial on both sides of the equation so it squares a little bit more nicely than otherwise. So in particular, I'm going to write this as the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 equals a over b minus the square root of 5. Now, what should we do from here? Maybe we'll square both sides. So if we square both sides, that'll give us 2 plus 3 plus 2 times the square root of 6. That's what this right hand side or left hand side squares to. And then this right hand side squares to a squared over b squared minus 2a times the square root of 5 over b and then plus the square root of 5 squared, which is 5. And this is actually a really nice consequence of the fact that 2, 3, and 5 are prime numbers and 2 plus 3 equals 5. That means we can cancel these guys, this 2 plus 3 on the left-hand side of the equation, with the 5 on the right-hand side of the equation. And then we're just left with 2 times the square root of 6 on the left, which gives us some motivation to square again. So let's see, if we square again, we'll be left with four times six, that's 24. And then over here, we'll have a to the fourth over b to the fourth, that's this thing squared. And then minus, let's see, that will be four a cubed times the square root of five over b cubed, and then plus four a squared times five, so that's gonna be 20a squared over b squared. But now let's notice that we can use this equation to solve for the square root of five in terms of rational numbers. So let's maybe do a couple of steps just to see how this will end up. So maybe we'll move this over to the left-hand side and the 24 over to the right-hand side. That leaves us with 4a cubed times root 5 over b cubed is equal to a to the fourth over b to the fourth plus 20a squared over b squared minus 24. Then we can maybe multiply by b cubed and divide by 4a cubed, and that gives us the square root of 5 equals, so let's see, we'll have a over 4 times b, so that's what cancels with this term after multiplying by b cubed over 4a cubed. And then here we'll have plus 5b over a. That's what that thing turns into. And here we'll have minus 6b cubed over a cubed. So we have something that looks like that. Now you could smash this stuff together, but I think it's pretty clear that we've got the sum of three rational numbers, which is clearly a rational number. So we've ended up with the square root of 5 is a rational number. But by our first lemma that we proved, that is impossible. So that leads us to a contradiction. Again, let's see what we contradicted. Well, that contradicts this original assumption, which was root two plus root three plus root five is a rational number, which means it must indeed not be a rational number. In other words, it must be an irrational number. And that's a good place to stop.